To begin our ceremony this morning, our kindergarten class of 2035 will be accompanied by our senior class of 2023. Would you please welcome them as we begin our new school year together? seasons even for institutions like USM. We just experienced one very long and cold institutional winter with the COVID pandemic. Forces beyond our own control forced us to stick to much smaller circles for much of the last two years. Since we began taking masks off last March, it is remarkable to me how much easier it has been to connect with a broader set of people. And what a joy that is almost like our glorious Wisconsin summers. USM is special for so many reasons. This beautiful campus, our comprehensive academic program, a substantial endowment, but most importantly, because of the people who make up this exceptional community. Students, teachers, administrators, alumni, and parents, we're all in this shared endeavor together. In our strategic planning research last year, we heard from many of you that relationships with others were the most treasured part of your USM experience. These relationships take so many forms, student to student, student to teacher, parents to other parents. This school year, I challenge you to lean in and embrace this exceptional community. Attend sporting events, dramatic performances, back to school nights and PA coffees. Make new friends. That is where the magic of the USM experience is found. Speaking of newer faces, for his was hidden behind a mask for much of his two, first two years here at USM. I'd love to introduce our beloved head of school, Steve Hancock. Thank you, Mrs. Werner, and uh, we are also thankful that you've agreed to serve as the president of the Board of Trustees, and your love and passion for the school is truly remarkable, and I look forward to doing great things together. This is an exciting time for the school in many ways. And I also would like to thank our fourth grade ambassadors here, Raina Lazaro, Winston Monk, Owen Flack, and Simona Merich, for representing your class in the lower school so well as we celebrate as we celebrate fairness today. So you may go back to your classrooms, classes right now. Thank you. And today I begin my third year as your head of school. 
and I've learned so much after, uh, after these past two years. And I look forward to the synergy we are creating today as we launch a new school year and announce a new strategic plan for USM. Now I want the focus today to be about our incredible students and faculty and the journey they will embark on in just a few moments. Next week, we will publicly launch our strategic plan with a new website and I'll launch with a message from me and our school-wide priorities, key announcements, and a plan to share our accomplishments over these next years. So look for an email next week with all the details. The Common Trust features prominently in this new plan. Our commitment to the values of respect, trust, honesty, fairness, and kindness are important to me and to you. In last year's survey, we learned just how important the Common Trust is to our students, parents, faculty, and alumni alike. We are universally aligned behind these values. Yet, we learned one value is a bit more challenging to define than the others. That ideal is fairness, and it just so happens to be on the rotation of our opening assembly this year. Now, I know the prefects have a lot to say on this topic, Treating each other with respect and trust and honesty and kindness are universal truths. Fairness, however, can present some challenges. Fairness did present issues to a character in a book that I love and have read many times. Some of you might know of a little girl named Matilda from Roald Dahl's book of the same title. Let me remind you of the story. Sweet and bright little Matilda Wormwood a child of wondrous intelligence is different from the rest of her family. Misunderstood by everyone and ignored at home, she escapes into a world of reading, honing her skills and exercising her mind. Once she's sent out off to Crunchham Hall Elementary School, headed by the cruel, hulking headmistress, Miss Trunchbull, Matilda needs all the help she can get. But amid darkness, Matilda finds a single light in warm-hearted Miss Honey, her first grade teacher, who recognizes her remarkable skills. Matilda is all about fairness. She sees the inequities that exist in her school and how her headmistress treats others. That's not fair, is her battle cry, and she works to help her classmate, classmates fight for, for fairness. The musical based on this story has a chorus that has always resonated with me and it might resonate with you too. Even if you're little, you can do a lot. You mustn't let a little thing like little stop you. If you sit around and let them get on top, you might as well be saying you think that it's okay, and that's not right. And if it's not right, you have to put it right. I hope you will all look out for injustice in our school, in our community, and in our world. Stand up for what is right and just and seek to utilize your skills to fight for fairness. Fairness on the playground, fairness in the ways we treat each other, and fairness in both the big and small things in your life. At the same time, look at yourself and find the ways in which your actions might be viewed as unfair by others. Personally, I have to do this all the time. Creating and setting rules and policies for our school is fraught with fairness issues. We are conditioned to fight for what we believe is right, but sometimes we can't see the entire picture. It's during these times I seek the guidance of others. For our students, that might be a friend, a coach, advisor, a teacher, and of course your parents. When you seek out guidance from someone who has lived life longer than you, you can gain perspective and have the opportunity to understand more about fairness through the eyes of others. I have great faith in the promise of this school year. We will work together to create a school that values fairness and works diligently to define and create an environment where everyone can hear his or her own voice and find a place to belong. And now, I would like to please welcome M Ellie Erke, Gus Matthews, Madison Benjamin, Mac Lindemann, Kadeen Abdallah, and Aston Omar to the stage to lead the Pledge of Allegiance. On the flagpole, you will see the United States flag and the class of 2023's flag. 
Each time we celebrate the class of 2023, over the next many decades, this flag will fly proudly. Would you please welcome these middle school students to the podium. who are leaders and role models for our entire school. Their dedication and integrity set the bar high as they represent the senior class and indeed the entire school. They embody the common trust through their leadership. And our first prefect to speak is Marco Gaich. Would you please welcome him to the podium? Hello everyone, I'm Marco Gaich. I believe fairness to be the key value of our common trust. The other four values are actions and ideas that we embody and live so that the rules of fairness will eventually reward us. Fairness is a lens we try to use when examining what's around us. We strive to be objective, removed from bias, so that we can better understand the people surrounding us. However, we can tend to lose sight of fairness when we look towards ourselves. We can look around at the vast sea of accomplished students around us and become plagued by doubt and uncertainty in our own merits. On the other hand, ego and hubris can make us brash, causing us only to see our successes while judging others by their failures. Treating oneself fairly requires a delicate balance to be struck between appreciation and rational criticism. However, by being fair in how we evaluate our own flaws, we can better empathize with those around us and understand the humanity behind the mistakes that they make. And conversely, by being fair in acknowledging our own accomplishments and good qualities, we learn to recognize these same traits and amplify them in others through honest and genuine kindness. So, I implore you, this year, be fair to yourself. Being fair to ourselves affords us the earnest rationality to connect with and value those around us. We begin to treat others the way we truly want to be treated. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Miles Ferrer, and I've been asked to speak to you all about fairness. Thinking of fairness, I immediately think of a certain golden rule drilled into our heads as kindergartners. We've all heard the golden rule. I'm sure many of you can finish it for me. Treat others the way you want to be. Good. <laughs> but I'll let you all in on the fact that I think this rule is ridiculous. It makes fairness seem transactional, obligatory that we play fair only with the expectation that we get the same in return, meaning that others define our actions, not ourselves. There are many above us authorities that often decide what's fair and what isn't for us. A great example is found right in the classroom. Students were expected to follow rules, listen, and have questions because we're young. And teachers, you're expected to uphold rules, speak, and have answers because you're old. I mean, wise. <laughs> but, and I can't emphasize this enough, you are not defined by who rules you, who you rule, who oppresses you, who affirms you, who offers you fairness, 
nor who deprives you of it, if you do not choose to be. You are not defined by anyone, unless you choose to be. Now frankly, I see no finer people to choose than the bright members of my community standing in front of me today. You all look lovely, by the way. <laughs> but that's your choice. You choose who determines fairness in your life. So this school year, I implore you all, choose wisely. And I'll leave you with a new golden rule. Do not treat others fairly because you expect that they'll do the same in return. Treat them fairly because you expect that they'll notice. Thank you. Hello, my name is Evelyn Graham and I am honored to be speaking to you about fairness today. Personally, I learned from an early age what fairness means to me by growing up with three siblings. A typical whine you may hear from a child to their parent is, that's not fair, when an older or younger sibling gets something the other does not. Being a middle child myself, I saw both of the sides of the coin and would never fail to whine to my parents saying, that's not fair, because I believe that fairness meant giving everyone the exact same thing no matter what. However, as I grew up, I realized that this idea of fairness was false. I learned that in order to be fair, you must acknowledge the differences from person to person. And rather than giving everyone the same thing, giving everyone what they need based on their specific circumstances. Everyone starts at a different place and has different life experiences. Even someone as similar to you as your own sibling has a vastly different set of needs. Today, we are all gathered here in the same place, but we've come from different backgrounds with our own life experiences. In order to actively work towards creating a community based on fairness, we must first acknowledge this fact, and then work on giving everyone the resources and support they need to succeed. And in doing that, I believe we will be able to foster a place that works against the inevitable unfairness of life and pushes everyone to reach their full potential. Thank you. Good morning, USM. My name is Libby Cox. In 1971, the one and only Dr. Seuss crafted the iconic tale of the Lorax inspired by his 1970 trip to Africa. The story starts with the onceler discovering the truffle tree and chopping it down to craft its need. Soon the Lorax appeared who spoke for the trees. He was shortish and oldish and brownish and mossy, and he spoke with a voice that was sharpish and bossy. The onceler reassured him, saying, I chopped just one tree. I am doing no harm. Ignoring the command of the Lorax, the Onceler built a small shop and then a factory, chopping tree by tree until one at a time was not enough. The Onceler said that he needed to go bigger, but he disregarded that he got bigger at the expense of the trees and the animals that inhabited the land before him. Until soon enough came the very last whack, the very last truffle tree went smack. The Lorax lifted himself with a grim look on his face, leaving only a pedestal that read, unless is his one trace. The Lorax did not ask for the entire world to change, but he recognized the unfairness that the Onceler posed to his community. And he used his words to attempt to change this, for he knew that the trees themselves could not speak. Fairness is not a colossal declaration, but rather a singular act. And while life itself is rudimentarily unfair, we as human beings can consciously differentiate between the two in every action we commit. An unfair world is inevitable, but choosing to behave with fairness will differentiate and intensify the essence of community shared among each of us. So, while you may not always have a small orange creature critiquing your every mistake, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Have an awesome school year. Good morning. My name is O.C. Igwe. This morning I would like to share with you all what fairness means to me. 2020 was a year that created unfair circumstances for many. It was the peak of COVID. For me, it was also the year I moved from a small town called Duluth, Minnesota to Mequon, Wisconsin. This was during my sophomore year, which I believe socially 
can be one of the most important years of a child's high school career. I was given the challenge of making friends with a mask ridding me of the luxury of putting a name to a face. I faced an entirely new level of workload, but felt I had no one to share it with. For a while, I felt I was on my own, navigating this journey, trying my best to fit in. However, I trusted the process. I started to slowly adapt. I made new friendships and found new favorite teachers. God willing, I was fortunate enough to meet people who introduced me to what the term fairness truly meant. Fairness means treating people according to their needs, which does not always mean equal. The struggles I went through were not congruent with every student at USM. I had different needs. I required a different level of assistance. My amazing teachers, as well as friends, showed me this newfound definition of fairness. And now I'm standing here today, two years later, as your prefect. My goal this year is to repay and inspire this narrative throughout our community. As members of this community, we must strive to help one another and set an example for those that come after us. Despite the move, I learned an important trait that will continue to characterize my life, and I'm blessed to have shared it with you all today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ellie. Allow me to introduce fairness with an obvious counterexample. Life. Life is not fair. For example, as I'm sure Flange would be happy to tell you, the law of averages is a complete myth. Just because you have 10 bad days in a row doesn't mean you're bound to have an exceptional 11th. Similarly, the golden rule isn't actually a rule, but rather a moral hypothetical that's sadly more convenient to break than it is to follow. My point is, fairness is not a guarantee in life. It's actually a man-made construct intended to compensate for the fact that life cannot spontaneously grant us everything we think we deserve. Fairness is an entity of self-deception. It is foolish. It is naive. And it is absolutely necessary. Because even if fairness is just a dangling carrot that's always just out of reach, its mere existence motivates us to be better people simply for the possibility of catching it someday. So, regardless of how frustratingly unattainable perfect fairness is, we mustn't concede our personal integrity out of arrogance, laziness, or apathy. We must stop expecting fairness when life has none to offer and then bitterly antagonizing the world when we are disappointed by its absence. Instead, when we recognize life's inevitable imbalances, let us be the agents of fairness and fill the words hollow shell. Let us choose to initiate tangible change over the closed eye course of an action. Let us continue to chase the carrot, even if our efforts aren't reciprocated in individual reward. Yes, life is not fair, but instead of blindly relying on the golden rule or the law of averages or whatever else we fabricated out of denial, I choose to embrace those four inescapable words because I believe that fighting for fairness is far more rewarding than waiting for it or abandoning it altogether. I hope you'll share that sentiment with me this year. Thank you. Thank you, prefects. Now, Mrs. Schuler and the members of the eighth grade chorus will lead us in the singing of the alma mater. Would you please stand as we sing our alma mater? <laughs> Thank you. 